Hey guys, it's Green Warrior. What if your mechanics were not what separated you from your dream rig? What if you could do whatever you wanted with your car whenever you wanted? It's been just over two years since I released my original video on YouTube, Supersonic Legend Training. I've learned a bit about what routines are good and what the best ordering for our training is. In this video, I hope to go over a routine that will help you to achieve your dream rank. Remember that above all else, consistency is key. And to stay consistent at something, you really want to enjoy it. If this training takes away the joy that you have for the game, then don't complete this routine every day. But if you can hold yourself to doing this training every single day, or at the very least, four or five days a week, before long, you will reach your dream rank. I've put a routine with 36 steps in it into a Bacchus mod training routine, or plugin rather, called Rocket League Training Timer. I actually just uploaded a video on my YouTube that goes over how to set up a routine using this plugin. This plugin is extremely useful, extremely, extremely useful. And one of the coolest things I've seen added to the game in a very quick minute. It allows you to add free play custom training and workshop maps into a routine that you can start and run through from beginning to end at the click of a button. So before any longer, before we go any longer, let's jump into the Supersonic Legend Training Routine 2.0. To begin, just like with my original Supersonic Legend Training Routine, we're going to start with boost padding. The recovery lane is the lane that goes around in a circle or, or like a football shape in the middle of the field. This is the path. What does weak side mean? So in this routine, we're going to go over our weak side or practice things on our weak side first before moving on to doing them on our strong side. I think almost everyone has a strong side and a weak side to every mechanic. And it's usually the same side for most mechanics. For me personally, I have more difficulty flicking the ball to the right using the right side of my car than I do flicking the ball to the left using the left side of my car. And so when I go down to 45 degree flicks, which is all the way down here, 45 degree flicks, 100 plus kph. I'm going to do my weak side first. I'm going to use the right side of my car to flick the ball to the right first, and then I'm going to go on to flicking the ball to the left side of my car to the left. And the reason that we were going to do our weak side first and then our strong side is you have more concentration or more mental focus. It's going to be easier to focus when you do a routine in the very beginning. And as you do routine, you're going to slowly lose focus. So we're going to put maximum effort and maximum concentration into the side or the direction that we struggle with the most. And then we're going to work on our strong side. And so my strong side is doing things counterclockwise. I'm always comfortable doing them clockwise. So we're going to do boost pathing recovery, looking straight at the ball with ball cam on. And I'm going to rotate around the recovery lane counterclockwise. While I do this, I'm going to try not to look at the ground or use my eyes to look over on the ground and see the boost. I'm going to try to only look at the ball and trust myself to feel where the boosts are. After you get good enough at this routine, you're going to stop missing any pads. And so what you're going to want to do is have the ball kind of go flying around using one of the buttons, like maybe the dribble button or maybe the button that sends it flying towards you. And the idea here is that we're going to simulate a game 
Like in a real game, the, the ball is going to be flying over the place. So we can never just have the ball stay somewhere in one place and then pick up boost like that. It's never going to be that easy. So we're going to pick different buttons to have the ball go flying in all different directions. We can maybe start warm up by having it stay in the middle though. So I started doing the recovery lane counterclockwise and I'm going to do it clockwise, which is the direction that I'm more comfortable in. And then towards the latter half, like the last 30 seconds of this, I'm going to have the ball start flying all over the place. This is really going to test my muscle memory and my sort of depth perception and just my muscle memory for where each boost is relative to the other boosts. Really what I'm trying to do here is just feel where the boost. I'm not even trying to look or use my peripheral vision. I'm really just trying to feel where that boost is. In a game, my vision is going to be focused on the play itself. And so I really want to ingrain it into my muscle memory where each of these are. All right, got seven seconds left. The next routine is boost pathing on the rainbow. So the rainbow pads are the pads that make a, a D shape or a rainbow shape right in front of your net. And those pads look like this. And so my weak side is counterclockwise. Now I can rotate around counterclockwise either with the ball on the back right corner or in the back left corner. So I'm going to try to do 30 seconds of counterclockwise rotation with the ball in my back right. And I'm going to do 30 seconds of counterclockwise rotation along this boost lane with the ball in my back left. And again, I'm not trying to look at anything but the ball. And in fact, I'm almost not even wanting to look at the ball and use my peripheral vision. I'm, I'm really just trying to feel where the boosts are. I'm going to maybe be looking at the entire kind of screen, like as a whole. Where is my car on this field? And then I'm stronger rotating clockwise. So I'm going to put the ball in the back right. I'm going to rotate clockwise around this boost pathing or this boost path. Boost pathing is a very, very underutilized, underpracticed skill. Not a lot of people even know that this is a routine. And even the people that do know about this kind of training just don't hold themselves to doing it. But it is really, really one of the best routines that you can do for yourself. There is a reason that is the first thing that we do. Not only because it's fundamental, it helps us kind of warm up our car movement, our power slide, uh, our boost management even, but because it can be a little boring. So we want to try to get it out of the way in the very beginning. If you can pick up these boosts consistently, your, your life is just going to be a lot easier because you're never going to have to be struggling to get boosts in defense. Right after, we're going to do something called Aim Training by Coco. This is the PC version. If you have Bacchus mod, if you're on PC, you should have the ability to put workshop maps into your training routine. And I talk about that in or go over that in my last video that I just uploaded, which talks about how to use this, this uh, Bacchus mod plugin. So in name training, you're basically going to put the first two of those three randomizers on. You could also put the third one on if you're maybe Grand Champ or above. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to beat our record. We're going to put, for this routine, we're going to put about 10 minutes in. Only have it set to one minute because I want to just get through this routine really quick. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to visualize, you need my boost. I'm going to try to visualize a straight line from the center of the ball to the center of the target that I'm trying to shoot to. What I'm going to try to do is make contact on the opposite side of the ball. So like if the see here i don't have my pen bring that out so i have a if i have a target like right here and the ball's right here i'm going to visually draw a straight line from this ball center or its center mass to the center of the net or the, the target that i'm trying to shoot i'm going to put a straight line i'm going to extend that straight line from the ball center to the other side of the ball 
I'm going to try to make contact right here when I'm coming up and shooting. I'm going to try to push the momentum or the weight of my car straight through that line. So I have maximum power and maximum accuracy or maximum strength and accuracy, you could say. It's not easy. This is one of the people's least favorite uh, trainings to do. And for a reason, it can it can be very frustrating. It can feel like you're putting a lot of time in and not getting very much out of it. But you will slowly improve if you put time into this routine. It just takes a lot of practice, a lot of repetition. And it is honestly one of the most important skills or mechanics in this game. Another routine or another mechanic that people neglect. All right, so that was the PC version of the routine. Now there's a console version. You can also do this on PC if you want. This is a really good way to take what we learned, the muscle memory that we just learned using the aim training and actually apply it to a game or the field, something on the field, the net. So I think it's really viable to get that muscle memory in aim training and then to try to apply it with a net in front of you. Now what we're gonna do is we're not just gonna hit the target because that helps us to visualize these lines that I drew out. We're gonna actually try to call out top left or top right and we can do this with shot one, we can do this with shots two and three, with any of these shots. I like to just put time into shot one, but there's a lot of value in putting time into the shots that are off to the side because it can be very difficult to get power or strength and accuracy from these sides of the field. But really, I just like to do shot one and I like to call out top left, top right, or top left, top left, top right, top right. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna visualize a straight line from the ball or wherever I wanna shoot to the ball center mass, and then I'm gonna to go to the other side of the ball. I'm gonna make contact right here. I'm gonna to try to drive up and push the ball straight through that line using the corner of the car or using the front of the car. So I'm gonna to shoot top left, and I'm gonna to shoot top left, and then I'm gonna to shoot a top right. And if I mess up and I don't get what I want, I'm gonna think, okay, I hit it bottom right. That means I needed to hit a little bit lower next time. And that's why we like to do top left, top left, top right, top right, because it gives you an opportunity to attempt a shot and then try to fix whatever you might not have gotten right. So right there, it was way too low. Try to hit theirs. I think it might've been in. Top left, top left, and top right. And get more on the side. There we go. All right, move on to power side bounce dribbles. Weak side, so my weak side, same thing, counterclockwise. I'm going to practice utilizing my power slide in a bounce dribble. So this is this is gonna help me do or practice multiple things, not just my power slide utilization, but also my timing, so just my bounce dribbles. Timing my arrival to a bouncing ball is really, really important because if I can get an accurate touch, hit the ball exactly at the time I want to after it bounced, uh, hit it right after or just a little bit more after I can get it to go up and straight or straight up. And so we're going to practice the timing of the bounces. Here this is clockwise, so this is my strong side. I'm going to go over to my weak side, which is actually clockwise on this drill. Using the right side of my car is a little bit more comfortable than using the left side. And I'm just going to take it slow. I'm not going to try to do anything crazy. Uh, I recommend using the, the second bounce, trying to get ahead of the ball, and using power slide to cut it. And then as you get better at this routine, you're going to increase the speed. So you try to get around the ball, increase the amount that you're turning on each touch. And you're going to try to get to the point where you can hit it uh, on the first bounce instead of the second bounce. And what that's going to require is that you hit this ball not right after it bounces, but a little bit longer after it bounces. So it goes straight up. So hit it right after it's going to go up and out. But if I hit it a little bit more after it bounces, it's going to go uh, more straight up. And I'm going to do my strong side, which is using the left side of my car and get it set up into the mid, get around it, realize my power slide by tapping it really quickly. And if I drop it, I'm just gonna reset it. This routine is one of the best. There are players who are known for the bounce dribbles, like Okalid. If you can really, really master the, uh, the power slide and or the bounce dribble, you will Thing, options will open up to you that you didn't see before in plays, like the ability to kind of turn around, start a bounce dribble, which is in the later part of the routine. Like, there's just so many different options that open up to you when 
you can get this mechanic down. Alright. And on to the next one, which is no air roll orbital recoveries. Weak side. So NAR orbital recoveries. This is my own drill. And I went over it in my ultimate warm-up routine or the best warm-up routine in Rocket League video, which I uploaded at maybe a year ago or so. And basically what orbital recoveries is, is it's for the free play drill where you hold your boost button down and you start flying around the ball. Start orbiting around the ball. NAR means no air roll. So what I'm going to do here in this routine is I'm going to try to fly around the ball and I'm not going to use air roll left, right, uh, anything. I'm not going to use any air roll to reorientate my car into a more comfortable orientation. With no air roll, I'm letting my car rotate around the ball just by flying around the ball itself. As you can see here, I'm slowly rotating and I'm having to make all of these tiny adjustments multiple a second uh, while not having any ability to correct my orientation. This is going to really, really test my muscle memory in the air. It's going to test my ability to control my car from every single orientation, 306 degrees. And my weak side here is counterclockwise. My strong side is clockwise. Same thing, I'm going to do a no air roll over recoveries going in the other direction. There's actually an upgraded version of this routine that you can uh, that you start doing. If no air roll by itself is easy or too easy, like it is for me, I'd say it's pretty easy. I'm not really, I'm not failing, I'm not falling to the ground. What I can do to make this routine more difficult is start adding random stick movement, or for me, random key presses because I'm keeping mouse. And what that looks like is this. What I'm trying to do here is mess myself up. I'm trying to add enough randomness that I'm having to constantly recover from my aerial. And the idea here is that no matter what routine it is we're doing, we're trying to push ourselves to our limit. If we're not failing, if we're not falling to the ground occasionally, then you could say that we're not learning. The next thing is directional air roll. The DAR, directional air roll. We're gonna hold down a directional air roll. We can also hold down a free air roll and then just uh, push our stick to the side to get ourselves rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. I like to use a directional air roll. Uh, right, my my weak side is directional or right. I have both directional air roll left and right bound. And uh, I don't use the right nearly enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate uh, with my weak side, which is directional right. And I'm also going to rotate around the ball uh, on my weak side using a... Uh, or uh, counterclockwise. So I'm using directional air roll right, and then I'm rotating around the ball counterclockwise. And this is going to be my most uncomfortable way of uh, rotating using directional air roll. I could also switch directions if I want. Switch directions in uh, where I'm flying around the ball. It's like right here. My strong side is uh, directional air roll left, and it is just one routine. So the directional air roll that I'm strong with is left. I can rotate around the ball clockwise. And then about 30 seconds in, if I want, I can also rotate around the ball counterclockwise using my directional air left. So I can mix it up. I can also, this is something else you can do. You can also fly directly over the ball, which will test your ability to kind of recover because it can it can be a little disorientating. You can fly over the ball and your control kind of reverses. Also by rotating a little bit tighter or keeping your nose a little bit more looking straight at the ball you can rotate tighter around it which will force you to make more adjustments a second all right and now we're going to use what we just practiced with the no air roll and with the directional air roll we're gonna, we're gonna not have any particular way of controlling our car in mind when we're doing this. We're just gonna try to get nice redirects to top lefts or top rights. Right here, I'm gonna maybe go top left and just move on to the next one. One attempt per is the idea on this one. I'm gonna try to get a harder touch than this. Maybe also practice using my fast air roll. So wait a little bit longer than normal before jumping. And we're not really 
obsessing over rotating my car. I'm just making sure I get this nice solid contact. I say as in this. Uh -huh. Dang. Dang. Let's see if I get this top left here. Top right. I can also maybe go for a double tap if I wanted to, but really not necessary. There's a there's a team later for that. And there's 40 total. So to give you a nice variety. Akita's um Redux is really a good training code for training pack. After this is Shadow Defense Control. So my weak side, I'm gonna have to mirror the shot because my weak side is uh using the left side of my car, so moving in the right towards the direction with my shadow. So I'm gonna use the mirror and then we're going to try to control this ball using the corner of my car. So right, right there I'm using the wheel that's closest to the ceiling when I rotate away from the ball. And then I'm gonna try to make contact right along its center of mass or right below its center mass. I'm gonna try to give myself a nice control touch. And then I'm gonna try to finish it or I could just focus on the catch itself once I'm comfortable with the catch or I'm confident that the catch that I got was what I wanted. Then I'm gonna move on to either retrying it or we're going to the next one. I wanna have a little bit of variety here. I'm gonna to go to maybe eight shot three, which has a bounce. I'm gonna to try to control this to myself, try to land with the ball. I'm asking myself when I'm doing this routine, is there somebody on the other side of me? And if they are, are they gonna be able to take the touch that I'm making in my corner? I think to be able to take that and turn it into a shot on target. This is my strong side. I can pretty comfortably shout to defend with the ball to my right. I'm gonna try to maybe score if I want. Try to basically break out without ever giving the opponent on the other side of the ball an opportunity to counter clear or take possession for themselves. When you're hitting the ball into your own corner, control is really, really key because if you make a hard touch, that loses you possession, the opponent is gonna have a free opportunity with that. And giving the opponent the ball in your own half is uh, is never never fun. Bang. I'm gonna, again, use that corner of my car that's gonna be pointed to the ceiling. I'm gonna use my wheel as well, the underside of my car. I'm gonna try to catch it. This is like the best thing you can do right here. If you can get it actually like up the wall into yourself. All right, Jungle Gym. Now that we've practiced our aerial control, well, we did boost pathing, shooting, and then aerial control, controlling your car in different orientations. Now we're gonna move on to flipping. And what Jungle Gym is, is it's a pre-play drill. If you're an unlimited boost on, you're gonna go up to the high wall or next to the ceiling. And you're basically gonna be flipping kind of in like a circle while flying alongside the top of the top of the wall. And for me, my weak side is flipping to the right or going uh, counterclockwise in this drill. So I'm going to rotate around the wall like this. Here I'm just doing a frontward diagonal flip. But what I want to be doing is experimenting with different kinds of flips. Like a backward right diagonal can send me to the wall pretty easily, which is a, that's the, the best kind of flip, easiest flip. There's also the side flip. Maybe that's actually the easiest one. Uh, then I, I can also experiment with musty flicking or, or back flipping to get to the wall. I can also experiment with uh, back flipping to the left, which when the ball is, or the, the wall is to my right, backwards left diagonal flipping can give me some really interesting landings. And so experimenting with flipping in different directions and controlling the, the flips is uh, is really, really useful. Flip counseling, your practice flip counseling as well. Here's just my strong side. So I'm gonna flip using a front flip and then maybe a frontward right flip see how I can cancel the, the, the flip and then recover out from it. See if I can land backwards and then control my car from here. Try not to let myself get below this line right here. And then I'm going to uh, go in a circle with my flip. So I'm going to do a backward left flip and a front flip then a frontward right flip and then a side flip to the right which requires that I turn my car around. See if I can land backwards. There we go. Try to stay on the wall for as much as I can. Back flip here. And then backwards left flip. And then left flip. And then front left flip. And now 
in the actual routine, and I'm going to be putting the actual timings for each of these, you're going to put either three or two minutes into your strong side, and then either two or one minutes, depending on the uh, the variation of the routine that you're doing. Um, and, and in the original routine, where there's three minutes or two minutes in the strong side, you're going to end up about 40 minutes to an hour in at this point. Oh, 40 minutes or so, I think. And so what you want to do is you want to do some hand stretches. You're going to stretch out your hands by pulling your fingers towards your forearm with one hand or the other. And you're going to hold that for 20 to 30 seconds, pulling kind of hard, not too hard, just enough to feel the stretch. You should feel it in your forearms. And then you can also do the other way, stretch your hands the other way. So take your knuckles, take the, uh, the top part of your hand and stretch it down towards your wrist. So your fingers are touching your wrist and pull that. And then uh, once you do that with both hands, you just, just a five minute break. Then you're gonna move on to the next routines. So pre-flips, we just practiced jungle gym, flipping all over the place off the ball. Now we're gonna practice flipping towards the ball. So we're gonna have a target now with our flips. So we're gonna take the ball up to the weak side. My weak side is the right wall. And I'm gonna hit the ball up. I'm gonna hit it hard, wait, wait. And then I'm going to try to flip. So come off the wall that I'm most uncomfortable with and then flip in the direction I'm most uncomfortable with. So that's the right wall and then a rightwards flip. I'm going to try to see if I can make contact. I'm going to actually double that. Oops. I'm going to try to basically pre-flip towards it. So give it a nice hard smack off the wall. Line up and see if you can... Ooh, see if you can actually hit that from really far away. The harder of a touch, the longer you wait the more difficult it's going to be to find that target way far out. And this is a little bit niche, but at the same time, it's not. This is a pretty useful, real noise, pretty useful mechanic. It helps you to reach things you might not have been able to reach otherwise. And then a uh, strong side, it's left. I'm going to smack it. Wait, flip. So you can reach it. Bang. Wait, 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 flip. Do I get that up left? Nope. I'm gonna try to hit it really hard this time. Dang. Wait under it. Actually, it did hit the ceiling there. Do it again. Wait, 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 flip. Up left, these nice. I'm also experiment with flipping in the other direction. Uh, either like you can consider the weak side your the wall or the direction you're flipping in. I like to do both. So like I'm weak coming off the right wall, and I'm also weak flipping to the right. So I do both on my weak side. And then the next routine is the delayed flips, which is a really fun one. Another really fun one. If you watch Squishy Muffins, take note of how he comes off the wall with the ball, and you're gonna notice that he does something some kind of peculiar, particular movement. How does he ex how does he keep the ball so high for so long? One of the ways he, he does it is he comes off the wall and then he hits the ball and then he flips. And here I can, you see him actually end up ahead of, ahead of the ball. That wasn't a good one. But uh, I'm going to try to not hit it forward or backward. I'm going to try to come off the wall more like straight up. And it's really good to do it off like your back wall as well, not the side wall, but the back wall. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to hit the ball and then flip. Right here I didn't quite do it. If I do it correctly with a delayed flip, you're going to hit the ball and then flip to stay next to it. This is a, one of those di routines I have difficulty with a lot. Something I more recently discovered as its actual own routine or move. And uh, something I wish I knew more about from earlier. And then uh, my strong side, flipping to the left, come up the left wall. It's going to look something like this. And then like squishy muffins will turn it into a flip reset and actually put it on target. It's pretty nuts. Once you know what it is, you'll you'll start to be able to see him do it, see when he does it. Uh, it's good for having like more accurate touches, like right there. Uh, it's also good for keeping uh, an air dribble going for longer because you don't need to use flip if you or use boost if you flip under the ball. You can you can stand right and extend that air dribble a little bit longer. You can also do it with the the hood. Here I'm hitting it or flipping into it and then hitting it. I need to be make make sure that I hit it softly. There we go. Um, yeah, like I was saying, 
It helps you to save boost. It helps you to also 50 the opponent as he does, huh? allows you to do. So allows you to have a more control touch. And by keeping the ball close, if an opponent jumps up to challenge you, you can direct a 50 to a teammate. All right, and then next up, since we just practiced our off the ball flips, free flips, delayed flips, we should be pretty warmed up with our flips. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ball up the wall and we're gonna flip towards the backboard. Just realize I'm doing it on my strong side, so I need to do it on my weak side. I'm gonna try to hit that backboard, the ball, and we're gonna try to double tap it. Yep. Flip to the right. See if we can line it up. Just keep on doing it over and over. Super close. Not my strong side. So I should be pretty warmed up here. And when I do it, it's just a little bit off the wall there. I do it on my strong side, I should be able to get these pretty consistent. Okay. You can also do some other variants of the double tap, like the mussy flick, I like a lot. But it's more competitively viable to just hit it as hard as possible, as quickly as possible. A couple minutes of this over and over. Triple tap. Also do the no flip, which I always forget about. It's a really good one, especially if you're past halfway line. And after this, I think, if I remember correctly, it's dribbling. Yes. So after we've done boost pathing, shooting, aerial stuff, now we're gonna go to the ground, good old ground dribbles. And for PC users, uh, you're gonna do let them use dribble challenge. You can also do dribble to overhaul if you'd like. It's a little bit Easy, just depends on like what level you are at with your dribbles. Um, if you can do dribble to overhaul in less than 10 minutes, then I'd say you want to move on to the left mirrors dribble challenge. This one is just my personal favorite. There's also, uh, there, there are other different workshops that you can do that train your dribble. And maybe even some of them are better than this one. I don't know. It, it's kind of up to you to use this to its fullest advantage or take full advantage of or make maximum use of these uh these workshops you can make them as difficult as you, as you like to basically by adding flips by adding power side cuts by adding little jumps or wave dashes it's completely up to you so if you're not pc if you're console the console version or the free play version of this training is basically just to put the ball in hood and free play, flick it, and then see if you can catch it. And then see if you can flip it, flick it, and then catch it, and just do it over and over, basically. And the idea here is that we're getting the ball over an opponent and then catching it to then continue to control it. And if you can use a front diagonal and then turn it into like a speed flip, I think you'll find that that's actually a, a really good flick. Allows you to keep possession, some kind of diagonal flick will allow you to if you're like directly under it i don't know what exactly it is but it allows you to get that nice flick that's just hard enough to get it over a challenger but not hard enough to like lose you possession and then you can get another touch so you can go for what i'm doing here which is you know catch double flick or you can turn it into the catch dribble into ball low yeah it's an extra team is 45 degree flicks and basically just do the same thing just practice our dribble we're gonna put the ball in our hood but instead of flicking it like forward left or forward right we're gonna go backwards left backwards right with the 45 by turning car 45 degrees in the air after dribbling setting up a dribble 
I mean, there's a there's tutorials on how to do this flick on YouTube. Basically, we're gonna try to 45 the ball using the right side over the left side of our car, depending on what you're most comfortable with. And right here, I'm trying to get, I'm not getting any, but I'm trying to get 100 plus KPH flicks. That should be one right there. <laughs> Just barely. And the right side of my car, that's not a 45, but basically any flick that I can get the right side of my car is gonna be good. Even uh, one of those frontward diagonal flicks gets over an opponent into herself. A tactical flick. That's a banger right there. And on the strong side, can't see anything. There we go. Using the left side of my car is a little bit, a little bit easier. I need to get the ball a little bit more towards the side of my car then I can get a nice direction change and I think I need to start turning it a little bit more or something just need to warm this up that's a good one 108 is actually what you want to try to get it's a bad one no height no speed also a bad one today is not my foot day no k1 Bang. Anything above 110 kph is, is really good. Anything above the net is also good. We're basically trying to score for these. So if it goes above the crossbar, then you can consider it like a fail. It's a good one to finish it. And now we got backboard defense. Backward defense. There's backward defense where you just bang it and you just get off your backboard, get the point off the ball. But there's also backboard defense. So controlling the ball. In de defense, basically what's most important is not power, but control. And just be able to do exactly what it is you want to do with the ball when it comes to you. In defense, really important that we control it. Uh, there's also times to bang it when the opponent overcommits on the play. Speed becomes a priority. Not, not uh, necessarily control. Uh, but we always want to try to direct the ball away from the opponent to ourselves or to a teammate. And so we're going to practice doing just that. In backward defense, we're going to hit the ball softly to the left, softly up, softly to the right, and then we're going to bang it in each of those directions after that. So I'm going to control it to the left by coming to the ball before it bounces on the wall, and then I'm going to pick that right side, and I'm going to hit it up to myself by getting under it, and then I'm going to try to be basically, when I'm catching it, fast down here and the slow up here. Uh, and then I'm going to control this to the right, and you know, it's not really a great touch. Because it could be a goal. This is a good touch because I can follow it. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to try to bang it to the left here using the side flip. And then I'm basically going to do the opposite with regards to my momentum management. I'm going to be kind of slow down here and then fast when I come up to the ball. Uh, so I'm going to clear it forward. And I'm going to try to clear it to the right. And I'm visualizing a teammate up on the right or left side. And yeah. End it with a control touch up to myself into maybe some kind of air dribble into catch. All right, fast arrow test. This is a really, really, really useful mechanic to train, and not a lot of people train. People do not train this. I don't know what it is, but people do not train their fast arrow, and they don't even realize that their fast arrow isn't good enough until really high in the ranks a lot of times. The person who originally called out my fast arrow was Scholar RL. I highly recommend looking up his uh, his content. He's a great coach. Uh, and he gave me this training code. He said, try to hit shot four. And I was like, oh, my fast arrow. Oh, I can fast arrow. What do you, what do you think? I can hit shot four. Shot five isn't possible. Don't even worry about it. Make sure to turn your shot four off too, by the way. Um, but yeah, his task was basically for me to hit shot four three times in a row. I could not hit it a single time after 100 attempts in a row. Couldn't do it. It was, I thought it was impossible. I thought it was a joke or a prank. Here, didn't get it. Um, but eventually, just by working on fast aerial technique, by holding my first jump for 250 milliseconds is the timing, by pointing my nose more up to the ceiling when I jump, so that when I'm jumping a second time, I'm not looking like this, but like this, and it's just one seamless motion, by holding a boost from the very beginning all the way through, and getting that flip timing and, and pulling my stick up quickly without backflipping by just doing it all correctly. 
all easy easy enough to say right but uh by just putting the time into developing that muscle memory uh watching youtube video if you need to verges faster uh video or tutorial is really good to watch by just putting the time into perfecting that muscle memory you will if you start to hit shot four consistently like i think i've gone to the point where you can hit 15 20 times in a row if you can get to that point and you can then start to actually use it in your games like you you will start to beat people in sso and uh what's this bounce surge roll oh yeah so now we're getting to kind of the fun fun stuff towards the end now that our base mechanics have all been warmed up uh bounce surge roll pretty simple i'm gonna have the ball come to me i'm gonna try to line up to where it's bouncing and right there hit it a little bit too late i'm gonna try to hit it right for bounces give myself a nice pop that i can then follow and then i'm gonna try to get a double if it goes to the wall i'm gonna try to see if i can get it to bounce in front of me. i'm gonna try to just stay under it that's kind of the main objective not as concerned with hit putting on target as I am with just making sure that I'm staying there it goes uh, staying under basically and also uh, the reason we just did our fast aerial before this is we're gonna try to do our fast aerial using or we're trying to do about aerial using our fast aerial so when the ball comes to me and see if it can just slow down a bit oh, there it goes okay when it when I hit it off your bounces the idea is to use your fast aerial to Get up to it really quickly and if i do it correctly do it one more time here like i wish the ball wasn't as close on me like that but i should be able to and i can just do it from like this from this kind of bounce i should be able to get some really serious height very quickly very easily not have to use this as much boost our right, next routine is rolling ball to dribble and pretty much just gonna have the ball roll to you and this is a little bit easier of a setup than the bounce air dribble might be the easiest setup uh, the bounce air dribble, depending on what kind of bounces you go for, you could also go for this kind of bounce, like using the power slide. But uh, basically, you're gonna have the ball roll to you using uh, the either. I think constantly you don't have actually have this binding for you get the ball to just roll to you. But basically, you just hit it like this to yourself, and maybe use that power slide you practiced earlier. You know, try to stay under it, and using the wall, maybe double tap it, and then maybe try to follow it from the wall. Or you could even bring it to the crossbar, see if you can cross, uh, pinch it down. And then, uh, last but not least, the last round air dribble routine is going to be from a dribble. This is maybe the most practical. I mean, it just depends. Like in one to one, might be the most practical. Being able to control the ball up into the air well, from a ground dribble instead of just like relying on your flick allows you to go for a ground. Uh, or go, let, allows you to go for uh, air dribble bumps. Oh yeah, I got the uh, good display of how powerful those were <laughs> in uh, all the recent videos that <laughs> displayed in or highlighted in. But uh, ground air dribble is disgustingly good. You can go for ground air dribble from a bounce uh, from your hood like this. Just having uh, the ability to bring up in the air and continue to keep it high, like, will catch people off guard. They will not expect it. And you can practice using your no air roll, too, to get under the ball. And I think that's actually the most uh, useful way to do it, or easiest way to do it, most efficient way to do it. Finish with some music here. Adds in space. All right. Last few routines, uh, third to last, defensive backward reads. So this is one of the more difficult reads in the game, along with like offensive backward reads. Basically, you're gonna try to meet the ball before an opponent, an imaginary opponent. You're gonna use that fast aerial, and you're gonna visualize a teammate. Where are you hitting it to? Are you hitting it to yourself? Are you hitting it, maybe really hard to hit it yourself here. Are you hitting it up to a teammate on the right? Maybe even a teammate up on the left, if you can get it up to someone on the left side. Uh, and I try to put maybe three attempts into each of these. And then, yep, wish I could have gone into the net for some of those, but backboard therapy. This is going to be everyone's favorite routine, guarantee it. Nope. <laughs> this is probably my least favorite offensive training in the game, even though it's also, you know, one of the most useful common. I just cannot, I cannot hit that, hit that net. It always goes to the ground. Basically, what I'm trying to do is hit the very center of the ball. So, like, I'm trying to aim. Since the ball is above the net, I need to send it down, but I can't send it too much down. And so, if I look at the ball straight on, 
and I hit it even just a little bit too high. Should be as much as this much too high. Then it's going to go straight in the ground. But I've hit it too low, it'll go to the backboard. So I need to hit it. This is the, the center of mass right here. I need to hit it just above its center of mass, but not too much above its center of mass. I need to hit this little sliver here, basically. And when I remember to do that, it can, it can be easier, but even still, it's it can be difficult with timing. There we go. Because it's, it's so precise, and the timing of when you're hitting it is, uh, yeah. It can take, a, take some time. I'm actually hitting them. It's crazy. There you go. It's the left and right reads that just annoy me so much. Waiting a little bit longer can help a lot. But, you know, I'm trying to push myself to, to read it quicker and quicker. Dang. Also, I'm going to use my fast arrow technique. I feel like a bronze could outdo me with these. That feels... So yeah, I'm trying to trying to visualize that center mass. We're gonna get right above it. And then now for double tap playground, that little diagram I drew, you're gonna be doing kind of the opposite thing. So if I'm trying to hit the ball to the backboard when it's floating in like one of these setups, and you know the net's right below, or it's kind of a little bit further down below, I'm gonna try to hit the ball on its center mass or very slightly below. So I'm gonna try to not hit it too high. I'm gonna try to hit it not too low. I could probably get away with hitting it too low though, because then I can hit it to ceiling and then go for a ceiling double tap, triple tap, whatever, go crazy. Uh, but usually I don't hit it too, too low. So I'm gonna hit it basically below center mass, somewhere here. Usually somewhere here or here. And then it should look something like this. Oh, yeah, I meant to do that. If it's really far away and you hit it a little bit more below, then it gains that height. Uh, I'm going to try to hit the ball straight on with these. The less extra movement, the better. Hopefully it lets it bounce. Okay. Best aerial, practice that. Always take an opportunity. Every opportunity to practice that fast aerial. Uh, I don't really like to do the ones in the wall because I can just do that preplay. Back up, boost backwards a little bit. Oh, try not to put too many attempts into one. Just kind of run through them, maybe two attempts per or something. Get like one retry in, and then just go to the next, because there's 50 in here. And the idea is to do one attempt per. And just get these. These ones are really annoying. There you go, and that is it. We're going to finish with, see so we can get a nice banger. Finish this off. This is probably my least favorite setup in this entire code. The most difficult. Comes off from the side. So here, if we're thinking about it this way, like if we're going to break this down, how do I need to hit this? If it's coming out from the right to the left, from the right to the left, then I need to hit the ball on its left side from kind of this perspective. And I also need to hit forward and up. So I need to hit it forward. And then I need to hit it up, which would be down below. So like here, I need to hit it right in this quadrant here. And I'm looking at it. And I try to hit in this quadrant. So let me, let me aim for that part of the ball. See if I can get it. Get it with the nose of my car. Boom. Just a little bit too much under. I need to hit it a little bit more on the left. There we go. And bang. There we go. All right. That's awesome. My name is Greens Warrior. This, this has been <laughs> SSL Training Routine 2.0. This has been a long time in the making. Really enjoyed making this routine. I uh, just want to thank everybody who has allowed me to be a full-time coach for these past few years. I, I love every single one of you guys. I could not do this without you. Um, I would never trade what I do for anything else. A little bit off topic, but uh, anyway, this routine I made was, came from the passion that I have for my students. I really want everyone, not just my students, but everyone who watches this to use this routine to reach new heights. And I would love, love, 
love to hear if this routine gets somebody to supersonic legend i'm going to be using this routine myself from now on i'm going to try to be as consistent as possible with it and uh other than that thank you for watching